This is one of the easiest and most versatile breakfast items in the world. What more do you want me to say? Okay, so let's talk frittatas. Now, I don't think we make enough of them. People aren't talking about them enough, but I do know that frittatas should be a higher topic of conversation. They're special. You can do so many things with them. You can add anything in them, as long as you cook the ingredients that are in there. If they have water in them, you gotta cook that out first. But it makes cooking breakfast or brunch for a crowd easy. It's something that you can serve at room temp. You can even have it for lunch if you're like that. Dinner, why not? Awesome. Now, with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Right, a frittata, oftentimes overcomplicated, is one of the easiest ways to serve breakfast or brunch to a crowd, or really any meal for that matter. I have three versions here, a basic frittata, something a little fancier with merguez and garlic chantilly. Yeah, you like that fancy little word? And last, though not traditional, a bacon frittata and cheese sando. Let's begin with Mr. Simplistic. First, find yourself one large red bell pepper, pop that directly onto an open flame of a stovetop, and char all sides of your pepper until completely blackened. You'll want this at max heat, and of course, the addition of a blowtorch always helps. With honestly, most scenarios. If you have an electric stove, then I would recommend getting a blowtorch and, you know, going to town. Once every square inch of that thang is charred, pop it into a bowl, cover with plastic wrap or foil, and let it steam for five minutes. To get out of the bowl, wipe off all the char with a paper towel and chop it into one-inch chunks. Now, in a 10-inch skillet with an oven-safe handle. I repeat, oven-safe. But what happens if it's not safe? Well, I'm not very good at math, but I can tell you that the rate of heat added to the non-oven-safe handle equals a deep sorrow that burns far into the recess of your wallet. To that pan, add two tablespoons of olive oil, heat that over medium heat until hot, hot. Add in one sweet onion that's been nicely julienned, season that to taste with salt, and saute that for two minutes or until it begins to soften. Then add your roasted pepper and continue to saute for three more minutes or until it starts to pick up some color. In a bowl, add in nine large eggs, beat them thangs hard till you incorporate some air and the mixture is homogenous, then beat in one teaspoon or five grams of kosher salt, a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of heavy cream, and a quarter cup plus two tablespoons or 90 milliliters of whole milk. Whisk together until combined and add that to your pan. From there, add in about one cup or 70 grams of grated cheddar and a quarter cup or 55 grams of crumbled feta. Gently stir that mixture just until the eggs begin to pull from the pan and immediately pop that thang in an oven preheated to 350 Fahrenheit, ideally on convection if you've got it, for 15 to 18 minutes or until a beautifully puffed and cooked frittata emerges. You know, just a slight amount of color on top is nice. Let that cool for one minute, then invert onto a plate, add some additional grated cheese of choice, maybe some black pepper and a little touch of olive oil, and that is your lovely simple frittata. Oh, right, that reminds me, I do have a cookbook that has many other breakfast recipes. Did you know that? Now, next up is Mr. Fancy Pants. Honestly, it's really the exact same technique, but adapted with protein. This is the beauty of a frittata. It's all done in one pan. Wait a minute. Does this make it a uh, one pan meal, meal, meal? I've always disliked that term, and the answer is sort of yes, but not really. Now you have 25 more things you have to wash up. Hi, yeah. Right, so in a 10 inch skillet, either non-stick or cast iron is fine. Add in just enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan, heat it over medium high, until hotter than the seething hatred I have for unseasoned beef, and add in one bunch of green onions that have been cut into one inch segments. Let those sear until wilted and some light charring has occurred. Then add three links of merguez sausage that's already been cooked and it's been sliced into quarters. Let that sear until most of its fat is rendered and it's beginning to get some nice color. Add in one teaspoon or one gram of very finely chopped fresh thyme leaves, stir together until fragrant. Then again, in a bowl, add your nine eggs. Take out all your frustrations and beat that gosh dang thang. Then add in a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of heavy cream, your quarter cup plus two tablespoons or 90 mils of whole milk, and lastly, your one teaspoon or three grams of kosher salt. Pour that into your pan, along with half a cup or 20 grams of grated pecorino cheese, four ounces or 110 grams of fresh chev crumbled on top, pop that into your oven, 350, ideally convection, for 15 to 18 minutes, let it do its thing. Now, this time while we're waiting, in a medium-sized bowl, add half a cup or 120 milliliters of heavy cream, begin whipping that with a whisk constantly until it reaches soft peaks like this right here. Yes, it's a whipped cream. Then grate in one garlic clove, mix together until evenly distributed, and that's it, a savory garlic chantilly. Now, again, out of the gut dang oven and look at that. Remove your frittata onto a plate, coat that thang in grated cheese, maybe a little drizzle of some truffle-infused olive oil. Slice it like a pie, place it on a plate, give it a gentle quenelle of your garlic chantilly right on top of your slice. Hit with chives, fresh cracked black pepper, flaky salt, and look at that, a fancy frittata worthy of the title Prince, dare I say, King of Frittatas. Now hold your horses, buddy. What if you have leftover frittata? Or better yet, you just decide to go against the grain here. Cook yourself 
yourself some bacon in a pan over medium heat, flipping often until your level of cook has been achieved. Some people like it crispy and some like it flaccid. Either is fine by me. Snag yourself some brioche buns, toast those bad boys up. In a little bowl, mix together a third cup or 61 grams of mayo, two tablespoons or 26 grams of Cholula or crystal hot sauce, two tablespoons or 32 grams of sriracha, and salt to taste. Stir together and that's a little surprise for your buns. Now to assemble, add a slice of Swiss cheese or any cheese of your choosing. Melt that on your bottom bun with a blowtorch or under your broiler. Hit with a nice layer of your sauce, followed by your bacon strips. Now this is the magic. Using a round biscuit cutter that's roughly the same diameter as your buns, cut out as many pieces of frittata as you need. Now plop that onto your sando, add another slice of cheese, melt again, sauce your top bun generously with spicy mayo, and finally lower that bun to crown your king. Me oh my. This makes so much sense and yet nobody seems to really be talking about it. Wake up! It's time to open your eyes to the frittata breakfast sandwich world. Now let's place all three of these options side by side and see which one could be our most ideal choice. Welcome to breakfast time. This, the basic one in all of its glory with the cheese full. Salted perfectly, it's got all the flavors you want. It's not like too fancy, right? A lot of time people see the word frittata and they're like, oh my God, that sounds kind of fancy. Well, it's fine because this is simple flavors that you'll understand and enjoy. Now, this on the other hand, merguez. We had a very hard time finding this. Bon appetit. Ooh! This would be blessing if you have this little salsa verde on the side. But then why didn't we do that? Vikram, what the hell? I know it was my job to do that, but why did I not do that? This would be great with any accoutrement. You can sauce these how you want, you can eat them just as they are. Or if you want to take it a step above, you can make this sandwich. That looks busting. I'm gonna put this in me. <laughs> okay. Holy sh why did we even make the frittata in the first place? What we should have done is doubled this recipe, put it in a nine by 13 baking dish, get our hole puncher and have a bunch of buns and just hole punch it out. And you've got a breakfast sandwich party for the homies right here. I'm gonna try this goddamn sandwich. That's a lot of bite to get through. It is very good. Every part of that is incredible. I'm not usually an egg guy, and this is like, I need this entire thing. What did we learn today? Frittatas are delicious and incredibly easy to make, and you can mix and match however the f you want to, but it does not end there. It ends with a sandwich. Either way, you're gonna be putting something in your mouth that's delicious and moist. You wanna know what else has Papa's most jiggly, beautiful, moist? Eggs in plain sight. B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our frittata. Oh, my little tummy. The lesson learned is that you don't necessarily have to follow this recipe, you just need to understand that you can make this into whatever you want. It's a choose your own adventure. It's like I'm playing Gears of War, but with like eggs. And it's literally nothing like that. We all like to have choices, okay? And I'm giving you that option. But the more important thing that you should understand is if you choose not to eat the frittata as is, you could always have it as a little sandwich. A sandwich! Everybody loves a breakfast sandwich. I don't know a single human being on this earth that doesn't love a breakfast sandwich. Now, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you.